Hello, it's the end of July, so it's time to look at the books that I've read the second half of the month, and I read eight, eight books this uh, this second half of July, which isn't bad going. The first one I read is um, was One Blood by Deneen Milner, and it's uh, an arc. Uh, net galley arc it comes out on the 31st of august and it's about three generations and the stories make you gasp at times it's about three women who are united by blood and family uh, it's in three parts you've got grace who will absolutely break your heart uh, you've got lolo dolores who believes um a woman's role is babies and looking after a husband and looking after a house and then you've got Ray um, who tries to be a wife a mother a lover and a queer woman you've got three very different women tied together by motherhood motherhood is a theme and it's intergenerational trauma as well um, the bond between these three women is very special and grace will haunt you I love that one the next one was the one that won the winner of the Dylan Thomas Prize this year. And it's a collection of short stories by Arinze Ifekanandu, I think that's the way it's said. God's children are little broken things. And this is about what it's like to be queer in Nigeria. Nine stories showing the struggles and... Um, sort of the different things that the secrets that they have to keep by being um, gay in Nigeria. Um, I found the book difficult to get into because I'm not, I don't love short stories. It's, I, I just find it really difficult to get into short stories sometimes and, um, and these I found difficult to get into. The next one was a Greek myth retelling um, comes out the end of August, I think this is, um, Herc by Phoenicia Rogerson. And this is a very different retelling. It's the story of Hercules, but it's not told in a linear fashion. It's sort of chronological, but it sort of deviates a little bit. And it's not told through Hercules' eyes. It's not the story of Hercules. It is the narrative's of people who knew him, wives, lovers, enemies, friends. It's their stories about Hercules from um, childhood to, to old age sort of thing. So it's people talking about this Greek hero and it's dishing the dirt on it. And I had really good fun with that one. Um, it's a portrait of a complex hero um, he's surrounded by death and destruction. Um, he loves deeply, but his love isn't a safe haven for those that he loves. Um, he feels guilt. He's got a desire to atone. It, a, a super way of uh, telling the story of the Greek hero. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that one. Then I moved on to um, a book I listened to on audi audi Audible. Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter, and I adored this. Um, I think listening to it gave it that extra something because um, you've got the story of a dad who's grieving for his dead wife and at the same time bringing up two boys. He's a Ted Hughes scholar. He's writing um, a book about Ted Hughes's poem, uh, Ted Hughes's Crow, and then Crow enters the story as um, a creature that will eat up sorrow. He's determined to stay with Dad and the boys until the, they don't need him anymore. And Crow's voice on the audio is absolutely fantastic. Um, there are some very sad bits at times. And there are bits that... If you've lost somebody, there are bits that you will recognise. There are parts of it that's recognised. Um, 
I adored it. And adding, listening to it gave it that extra something. Then the next one, it comes out on the 7th of September and it's Sebastian Volk's new one, The Seventh Son. And this one, there are so many questions in this one. It's set in 2030, it starts in 2030. And um, Talissa is an American student, an American academic, who goes to London to be a surrogate mother because the money she's going to get for being a surrogate will help fund her studies in America, future studies. And I don't want to tell you what happens because if I tell you what happens, it's, it spoils the whole thing. But it asks questions about nature and nurture. If we should do something, if we can do something, should we? Um, it's the right to choose. It's what it is to be human. I can't go into it without giving the secrets away. But what happens? It, it is 2030. It's a page away from where we are now. And it makes you think, well, could this actually happen? And it's scary to think that, yes, it could happen. It's terrific book, speculative fiction. It makes you fear almost, for what, what could happen in the future. Then another Ned Galliard um, comes out 21st of September, I think this one is. I might be wrong, it's sometime in September. A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I've never read any Ava Reed before. And this one we've got fairy tale, obsession, magic, misogyny. And you've got it all wrapped up in a gothic overcoat. Um, you've got Effie who is haunted by this creature, this fairy king, who is a creature in a book that she has loved since childhood, this book, Ariadne, sorry, Anne Howard, by um, Emrys Merdin. And he is her go-to author. She adores him. And this book has, it's the pages are sort of so worn. It's a wonder she can even keep reading it. Um, she wins a competition to design, redesign Emrys Murden's house. He, he died sort of six months previously. And as a first year architecture student, she wins this competition. And when she gets to this place, she finds that it's being taken over by water, by the sea. It's rotting, it's waterlogged, it's damp. And there's somebody else there as well, another student, a literature student who is there supposedly to gather together letters and diaries about Emrys Murden, but actually he's got an ulterior motive. And you've got secrets, you've got revelations, you've got magic with the fairy king, you've got the sea as another character slowly, slowly taking over the house wonderful story absolutely wonderful then rose tremaine's new one absolutely and forever they've got a middle class teenager marianne constantly being put down with her parents made to feel that she's a disappointment uh, especially when she announces that she's in love with this 18 year old simon hurst and she's going to love him absolutely and forever um, he's the golden boy. His parents have very high expectations from him, uh, for him. And it all goes wrong. And these two have to bury their dreams. But this obsession with Simon Hurst never leaves her. And we follow her as she gets older. And this obsession almost stops her from having a fulfilled life. Um, her par parents, again, you know, that they are disappointed in her, but her best friend Petronella sticks with her and she is, will always tell it as it is. Um, there's, she's got such, you see everything through Marianne's eyes. There's a naivety to her, there's an innocence to her, but she is very witty, very humorous. And, you know, she thinks things and then she can't remember whether she's actually said them out loud or whether they stayed in her head. and. 
she is somebody you might want to shake her sometimes you might want to hug her sometimes but you will never dislike her and then the final one for the month was the waves by virginia wolf another one that i listened to on audible and this one you've got six narrators bernard louis neville rhoda Ginny, and susan and you hear their voices throughout the book from childhood to old age talking about their lives talking about their, how they interact with each other and how one event the death of a school friend percival shaped and affected each one in very different ways um beautiful poetry stream of consciousness victoria Woolf, sorry, virginia wolf at her best you know this poetic style the stream of consciousness style um listening it to it on audible you get all the different voices which is really nice so those were the books that i read the second half of the month um the books that i add the, to the books the first half of the month i read quite a few didn't i um i think i read about your five six seven fifteen this month um book of the month it's got to be Max Porter's Grief with Feathers because that I found that one so moving at times and I love the voice of the crow. So for my book of the month is Max Porter. So let's see what August brings. Hopefully a bit of sun. So happy reading. Take care.